Good morning and thank you for joining me. Today we are going to be going through how I create one of our comic pages for the Beguilers. So if you've been to our website, we have our uh, comics page. Let me bring up the website here. So here we go and this is Danger Wears website. If you come on here, you can see our games and our newest game is out, Paul and Picker. That came out last month. So if you haven't checked it out, check it out. So if you come to our webpage and you click here, you go to our carousel, which you can go through each of the different options on the front page and you can see a little more detail. So we're gonna select the comics and so that brings up the comics page. So here we go. So you can see here, uh, we've got the many the Gillinger pages here that we've already created. And the first one is the rocket build plan. And we're now getting ready to do the next one, which the last one we did was uh, number 20, Hornatio receives a gift. After Hornatio gets his gift, he goes looking for uh, Zoi Zoi Hop and he finds her and when he finds her, he finds her sleeping, having eaten her fill of uh, the sweet grass here. So I'm using Moho 14. I have created the, most of these characters in 13.5. Importing them in makes no difference. They come right in really great. And so I've created all these characters and all these background features and all these parts. And when I create them, they're colored. But when I create the comics, they're black and white. And the reason I do that is so that children can print out these pages or parents can print out these comic pages and then the children can color them. And that's why we create these in black and white. That's the only reason we do it in black and white. But you'll notice the lettering is color. And that is because I use color in text to help convey the emotional uh, intent of the statement. So once you've read the comics for a while, you start to realize what the colors mean. And when I go in to change the color here, uh, if we select this uh, text of her snoring. So here's her text. We're going to go into that text control. And then we can choose uh, to color this just like we can color uh, parts of the character. We can color our text. And we can either choose our fill and our stroke our width and centering and the scale and all that uh, and we can also choose our styles that we've created to use for our characters and in my case I have created a series of speech colors so there's the normal color for speech which is simply a dark blue then there's disgust surprise fear joy sad love hate and be righteous recriminate, anger, pain, passion, shame, and guilt. And if you can think of any I've missed, please comment below and let me know. You should have a color for this and suggest the color. Uh, each one of these have a specific color uh, that I've tried to relate to uh, exactly what it is. So you can see the pain is, uh, a, it's dark red actually with a lighter red around the edges. So that's my uh, color for pain. And believe me, I'm an expert on that. So I'm, I'm not gonna go into it right now. But uh, So we can do guilt, which is the light green with the dark green around it, okay? And so when you come up with a new emotion that I should have a color for, and here we have hate, which is a dark purple with the black outline, and so each of these is their own specific meaning for, you know, the sad is the dark blue with the black edging. So you can see that there's easily a way to express all kinds of emotion 
if we start using a particular color for a particular means. So here we've got speech surprise, bright yellow with blue outline, you know, excitement. I was thinking electricity when I uh, came up with that one. So anyway, that's how we do the coloring on our comics. And you can see the blue outline here is just our capture screen edge. So I lay out an image and then I capture it using Control R in Moho. And that produces my comic panel. And then I can use that panel, cut it down to whatever size I need to lay out the page. So where we left off was where Zoi Zoi Hop is sleeping. Let's go ahead and open up this one here. Depending on your browser, the PDF may open in your browser or it may be downloading it. Depends on your browser, your browser settings. So if it doesn't pull up like this when you first click on it, it's more than likely downloaded it instead. And so you need to go to your downloads and open it from there. So here's the last comic. And we can see Hernatio is talking with the, one of the yellow Gavester ants. So here's Hernatio. He's been looking for Zoi Zoi. She was supposed to go find sticks and come back and get him because he was repairing the wagon. So now here he finds her. And you can see his thoughts are uh, her getting stepped on. I, I hope that comes across as a shoe uh, coming down on the bug. So she, he is seeing her sleeping. He's been looking for her. He's upset. He's got the wagon here. He's thinking, oh, she should get stepped on. So that's the last panel from the last comic. So now how do we continue? Well, we start with a script. So if we go to our folder, which is right, this is the uh, number one. Let's go to number 20, or yeah, let's go to number 20. This is the one I just finished. Here is each of the different panels to create that com the comic layout. Here's the image of Zoi Zoi getting stepped on by the shoe. And then I put that inside of a thought bubble for uh, Hornatio there. So that's how the comic ends. So now let's go to 21. And what I've done, you can see here, I've created uh, folders for each of the comics to come. But each of them looks basically uh, has only these three files in it. I've already moved backfield over into here because I need that. And that that is simply the background image that everything else is placed in front of. This stuff is not going to be interacted with within the image. So all I need is that background image. It cuts down the memory that Moho needs to calculate an image. So if you create a background that's going to be static, capture it and create a PNG of it, then use that animation instead of having Moho calculate each of those background items every time you go to render. So we start with a script. Fortunately, we've already got the script here. Hernatio pulls his own joke is the name of this script. And with panel one, Hornatio is standing over the sleeping form of Zoi Zoi. Eaton reeds nearby and the reed patch as well as the puddle that the reeds are growing out of. And that's the scene actually that we left off with from our last panel. And normally I like to start a whole new uh, section and begin from that number one and continue on. Uh, to the last panel and then start a new document for the next comic page. But because this one directly continues from the last one, I'm going to cheat and I'm just going to move to uh, position 11. I'm going to leave the gap of 10 there. And I'm going to start with 11, which will be my one. And so here we've got Parnatio and he's 
He's upset with Zoe. He was already showing that he wants her to get stepped on. And so now we need to pose him for this script. So the script says, Hernacio is thinking she fell asleep. I should yell and wake her up. So we're going to just capture that text because that's what he's going to be thinking. So we copy that from the script. We go in here and we're going to leave Zoe's uh, Z's and open up another message box. And so uh, this was back when Zoe Zoe was eating. And we're going to paste in our script. And we can see here it shows us that's making it very long. And uh, that's not really what we want. So we're going to come up here and we're going to press enter. And then right here at and we're going to press enter again. And so there we go. He's angry. So we're going to change the text color to anger and then apply. And OK. And now we can go in and pick up the text and put it on Hornatio. Now we don't want him to be standing exactly where he was before and the same scene. So let's bring it on down here and we'll put him standing over her because uh, he's thinking about yelling. So we got to go down here and pick up Hornatio wherever he is. And you can see here speech colors. That's actually so I can import all these different uh, emotional colored uh, styles into a new document easily. So uh, anyway, um, I need to find Hornatio. All right, the easiest way to find Hornatio. Well, there's the wagon. We're going to need that too. And there's Hornatio. So we pick him up and we move his whole layer. We don't move him within his layer box. We move him down to, he's going to be standing here. Since he's closer, he's going to be a little bigger. Okay. And uh, now we're going to put him here. And you can see on my wagon, the uh, I had to put the hand, Hernatio's hand, inside the wagon. So on the tongue here, I can choose Hornatio's left or right hand, or no hands, or uh, Symbolance hands. So those are the ones I've set it up for so far. So we're going to go with no hands because he's moved away from it. And since we're here, um, we're going to go to the wagon and then adjust the bones and move the handle down because he dropped it. Now we need to make sure we're going to ground level with the wagon so we can see the wheel there. It ends right here. And so we should drop the tongue down to just above his arm where, right there. So we'll do that. We're gonna bring the tongue right to about there. So that should be laying on the ground. And now we're gonna go back to Hornatio and we're gonna repose him is he's angry so let's uh, see if we can make his face look even more angry than he already does so yeah we we'll bring those eyelashes down and even now that makes him look sleepy oh that looks good yeah that makes him look angry so he's already making a fist in his hand which I had him doing uh, last time, but let's uh, go ahead and open his fingers here. Let's see. Like he's going to reach out and grab her. We'll do something similar to this other hand. We'll bring these fingers out so it looks like this hand is reaching down towards her. Here we're going to be reaching for her because he's now thinking, uh, you know, I didn't mean to move that. I'm going to grab his wrist here. So just move it a bit so it's not exactly the same as it was in the last scene. 
and stuff. We always want to make our characters look as if they're actually moving around. So he would have been coming from that direction a bit. And we'll just turn his legs like that. There we go. Uh, well, not that far. We don't want to put his hand behind his body there. We're going to put him right like that. So there we've got him. Now we bring his speech over top of him in the proper position. She fell asleep. I should yell and wake her. So we want that to show in the comic strip. And uh, Zoe Zoe, she's kind of, you know, she's looking the same in every scene. You know, people move around in their sleep. The, uh, so let's just uh, maybe move her arms a little bit. reposition her head, which will bring her antenna down a little bit, but not too much. So just like that. Bring this one down like that. Just so she's slightly different than what she was originally. And because I've got her laying down, all of her controls are over here above her. They're rotated, so to manipulate her body You've got to understand it's going to be moving, you know, up and down here. But that works because it's it's intuitive the way it's laid out. So if we wanted to stretch her body a bit, or uh, yeah, this one's her body, we could do that. So uh, yeah, let's do that. Like she's snoring. All right. So anyway, there we go. So just so that she's slightly different than she was in the uh, prior panels. There we go. We've got our scene, so we now need to pick up our camera controls. And just remember, when you're using the camera, you're moving the scene into the camera opening. If you try to think of it as moving the camera, it doesn't work. So we're gonna move the scene into the camera we're going to kind of center it. The camera is this uh, purplish edge here. So we're going to get there and then we're going to zoom outward so we can capture the whole scene. And uh, then we go control R and that will now render the characters and the added features as well as the static background. And as you can see, it's taking a long time. And if we had to also work on that static background in this compiling here, it would take much, much longer. So always remember that capturing an image of a complex scene will make your rendering much quicker. And that's true during animation as well. Oh, he looks angry. Yes, he does. <laughs> so now we've got uh, the scene is building. We'll zoom out a little so we can see it form. I'm surprised it didn't put the background in before everything else. But uh, that's all right. So there we go. We got Zoe's in the, in the grass. of text and that ding means we're done so now we need to save this so we're going to save as a PNG file and then we don't want to be in 20 any longer we need to go to 21 and 21 and then we're gonna save this and normally I just use the number it goes with um, but in this case I need to change this to 21 because I didn't save the file and I need to do that so uh, and this is going to be version 1 and this is frame 1 so we're going to get rid of that 11 and change it to frame 1 because it is our first panel for our comic so we're going to save that here 
And now that I'm thinking of it, we're going to save our document as a new document. So we're also going to go back to 21. And then we're going to replace this, the big illagers, 21 here. So now we've got our first image there. I don't know where that came from. And so now we're going to move to the next one, which will be number 12. And so we go to our script and go, well, what does the script say? So script two, Hornatio's now thinking, he, 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 he. And he's got this idea. He's going to move the wagon to be over top of the sleeping form of Zoids. All right. So if we were animating that, that'd be very complex, take a very long time. Fortunately, I'm only doing comic strips and that means I can get quickly through this. So we're gonna pick up this wagon and we're gonna need it in front of Zoi Zoi Hop. So we're gonna move it upward here, just like this. And there's Zoi's and we're gonna stick it right there. So now our wagon will show up in front of everything but the reeds there. And we're gonna grab it and we're gonna bring it over so <laughs> he's gonna be backing the wagon on her. Let's do it that way. We need the wagon to be a little bit bigger than it was because it's now closer. Oh, and it needs to be in front of this leaf. So let's bring that leaf down. Um, Blade four. Let's see what happens. Let's see. We don't. Yeah, we want it behind Zoi Zoi and the wagon. There. So now our aphids are still there. So that's good. So we got aphids are eating the sweets off of this leaf. You know, that's what aphids do. And they're not intelligent bugs like the Bagillagers. They're uh, crop bugs and such as that. So now, we've still got Zoi Zoi here. And he's going to back the wagon over her. So we need the wagon to be at her ground level. So about there. Let's see, can she be under? Yeah. So we'll show him backing it up. All right, like this. So then we need to bring the tongue of the, whoops, we need to bring the tongue of the wagon. Well, let's, the wagon's a little tilted. Let's go ahead and bring it this way. And as long as, yeah, right there, that should work. Yeah, because she can be under completely. So yeah, we, we'll put it like right there. And so now we're going to rotate the tongue up where uh, Hornatio is going to be backing it up. And let's kind of turn it a little like he's uh, maneuvering it. Let's see. We'll do it that way so you can see some of the uh, wagon. And then we'll rotate these parts a bit. And then rotate the wheels so they're not in the exact same position as they were in any other scene that we've done and now we're going to pick up Hornatio wherever he is down here and we're going to put him over in front of the wagon and he needs to be in front of the grass or the big uh, leaf there uh, blade four so stick him up here now all right and then we need the tongue of the wagon to show his hand so we go back to tongue and we're going to choose carnatio uh, both hands so we'll put both of his hands on the wagon or two hands on the wagon he's got four and now we go back to carnatio and we manipulate him and his hands into the right positions. So uh, we'll use his bottom hand here. So in order to use it, I first need to make 
his hand look the same. So um, we're going to close the fingers up here. And it doesn't have to be exact because it's going behind the wagon. So we need to bring his arm down and up like that. There we go. So we get his hand just behind the wagon. And now we can see that we're actually too large with Hornatio. So remember I made him larger and then I made the wagon larger? Well, the wagon is not quite larger enough. So we can either shrink Hornatio or make the wagon larger. Let's make the wagon a little larger. And so we're gonna grab the layer that holds the wagon and we're just gonna bring it up and then reposition it until it covers his hand completely so that there is none of his hands showing behind this grasping hand. So just a little bit more and there we go. So it's, it's sticking out a little bit, but uh, let's go to Hornatio and we'll move these fingers, oops. And we'll move these fingers inward a bit. I think that will, no, no, not as much as I thought. So looks like he's still a little bit uh, larger than the wagon should be. So we'll grab the wagon again and get larger and get in close and see that we're covering his hand. I think these hands were made when I had him uh, without fingers and so I probably should replace these hands on the wagon with the copies of his new hands because I did add his ability to uh, extend his fingers and bend them in and out. So um, when I made these I did not do that. But anyway we're just going to go ahead and close this hand up as well this one on the bottom and we're going to bring the fingers in so they're not extending out any further than needed and then bring this arm over and it's not long enough a couple of ways we can handle that well first of all let's rotate his body and you can see that brings it in so if we rotate his body more and rotate his shell around and then we'll turn his head and don't worry about this distortion. I'll explain that in a moment. And so now we do need to pick him up and move him closer to the wagon. And now we can get the hands positioned properly. So we come over here and get this arm like he's pushing. And that may be part of the reason I'm seeing his hands as well. Uh, is because of the distortion. So what is that distortion and why are we having it? Well, if you haven't used Moho much, you will not know about how the camera works. And as you move the camera, it does stretch the images outside of your camera view. So we can fix this two ways. We can zoom out so that Hornatio becomes part of the camera scene and then you can see the distortion reduces considerably. There you go. So once he's in the scene, he looks more like he should. And the closer to the center of the scene for the character or the object that you've got that is becoming distorted, the, the more undistorted they become. So now here you can see that's, that's just Arnatio. He's in the center of the scene. So now we've got Zoys over here. We've got our scene. Um, we don't need it to be this zoomed out now that we've got our scene prepared. We do want Zoys in the picture. And there we go. Let's bring it on over a bit. And now we pick up the words for Arnatio. And we move them by their layer into place and then we go into those and well first we pick up the script 
What is he saying? He, 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 he. So we just copy that. Don't copy the quotes. Just copy the text. So now we're going to go into our text here. And we're going to right click paste it. And ta-da. Now, he's no longer anger. He's now being joyful because he's, he's going to pull a trick on her. So we want this to be joyful. Um, it could be, no, no hate, no envy. It could be righteous, but I think joy would be more appropriate. So joy is light blue with a dark blue outline. And uh, so there you go. And we need to flip it because it, his speech box goes the other direction. And then because this is so small, let's grow the speech box a little bit so that it stands out more and apply. If you, if you start messing with speech before you apply, you can lose some of your features. And let's stretch it up this way like that because he's very, very happy about this joke. So now um, we apply and OK. And then we go back to Hernatio because I didn't mess with his upper arms. And we need to do something with his upper arms. And also his face. Because now he's no longer angry. He's now going to be having some fun. So we're going to take his smile and bring that, make it sinister. I'm, I'm laughing because this is already becoming sinister just by changing his uh, lips a little bit. We're going to bring his, anten or his uh, eyebrows up and point them back down like this because he's more joyful. And let's open his eyes all the way. So, <laughs> and then he's going to be looking uh, where he's working and, you know, his head is turned. So we'll just do it like that. And let's put his feet like he's in motion. So he's actually uh, doing work. And uh, then we need his other hands. So um, what could he be doing with his hands? Well, let's bring the fingers out because he's no longer making a fist. And the other arm is behind his body, so it really doesn't matter what we do with it. Um, fingers bent over there. So we'll just, uh, you can have it up here. <laughs> and uh, yeah, he looks like he's balancing. But he's on top of this plant. He, his, he shouldn't be uh, standing on that plant there. So he needs to come down to at least there. And now I need to readjust his uh, hands so that they're grabbing the uh, wagon there. Yeah, I need to redo the hands for the wagon because they were from when uh, I had the old Ornatio before I gave him fingers. So there we go. So now he's set up. Zoe Zoe is still clueless. And uh, we should move her a little bit so we'll make it look like she snored. Her stretching body would be here. So there we go. She's, she's retracting from the snore. So if we were animating this, she would be doing something like this. All right, so we'll we'll do it a little more because we're doing the comic. So now we're ready to render, so we control R. And I'm just gonna save before I move further. Uh, I like to save every time I make a major change. So we're now on frame two of this comic for comic 21. So now we're going to render it. This. And I put a V1 on the other uh, image, and I really shouldn't have. Uh, I'll take that out. So we're just waiting on this to render for us. 
And so while I am, uh, you know, these scripts are written by our uh, main writer, Sadie uh, Flores in Fresno, California. And I know for a fact that she would welcome somebody to jump in and help write scripts for the Begillagers. So if you're interested in helping where the story heads and what happens next, or you want to go, hey, you know, it would be funny if they did this, then please uh, put it in the comments below or email us at info at dangeraware.org. That comes to me, uh, to Sadie. You can email her directly at sadie.flores at dangeraware.org. And uh, if you've got ideas for a script, just let her know. And she would love your help. So we're going to save this now as a PNG. And we're going to continue with our output here. But like I said, I put 21 and uh, I put a version I shouldn't have needed. Oops, I shouldn't have done that. So we'll take out this V01. We don't need that. And we do need frame 01. Okay, so now this one is frame 02, even though it's 12. It's 02 for this comic page. So there we've got our second comic page. All right. So now we close this and we move to position three or 13 in this case. And now we go to our script and see what it says. So our script is here. So Ornatio collects some large sticks and forcibly slams them into the wagon. And then Zoizo leaps up, banging her head on the wagon with ow, 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 that hurt. All right. So again, animating this would take a lot. We'd have to have him moving, stepping, walking, picking up the sticks and all of that. But we can, uh, as a comic strip, we can just jump to the next position where he's over here. Now he should be in front of everything. So we're gonna move his layer up. And now he's in front of everything except the sticks. So these are the reeds lying on the ground here. Um, I think there's that one reed by itself somewhere, maybe not. Let's find out, let's see here. No, they're all together. All right, so we want him to pick up one of these sticks, so or a couple of them. So let's just uh, we've got to go to position one or zero, and here we have to edit our image. So we're going to Control X and cut those out and add a new vector and we're going to put it where Hornatio can manipulate it and so they should be below Hornatio so we're going to go here to wagon and we're going to create a new vector and this is going to be uh, handled reads I should have used a capital H there so these will be handled reads and we're just going to control V and it should paste them right where they were um, but it didn't they're higher and we're just going to move these reads to where we want them so uh, the handled reads we're going to pick their layer up and first we're going to put the orientation at the center of them and now we're going to pick up and put them down where they were, I think. About like that. So now when we go back to 14 and 13, there they are. I think they were closer like that. All right. And let's take 
We want the Carnacea standing. Well, first of all, he's going to be looking the other direction. So let's turn his head and let's bring his eyes over to what he's working on. And his body's going to shift the other direction. So it's shell's going to be like that, he's going to turn like this, he'll be standing, and that reed could definitely be laying on top of the other reed like that, and suspended, let's see here, let's uh, pick up those reeds, Handled reeds. We're gonna put the orientation of them in the center so we know that it looks like it was pretty much. So we got those. So we're gonna grab these and put them in Hornatio's hands so they need to be on the front of Hornatio. And he's gonna rotate them up. slam them into the wagon. So let's see here. Oops. So we're gonna go, we're gonna have him slamming them into the wagon. Let's have him slamming the heavy end. <laughs> All right, so they're gonna go into the wagon now to fix the wagon the easiest way to fix this wagon um, so that these are going into the wagon is to take the wagon the near buckboards we're just going to duplicate that and then move the duplicate so that we've got the originals in place so we're going to move the uh move them up so there they are they're in front of the uh, handled reeds they're just not in the right place. They got transferred up over here. So I'm gonna bring that down and then zoom back in. Now we just move it over and check the size. And looks like it's a little large, so we're going to have to change it. Oh well, let's just shrink it down to what we need. That's right there, so a little more shrinking. Okay, I think I shrink it a little too much. And it might be tilted. this a bit and just keep taking it up a little at a time until we've got exactly what we want right there should do it so there now we've got the near buck boards of the wagon in uh, outside of the reeds and so now we're gonna have Hornatio slamming them in so um, maybe we can move the reeds inside of Hernatio. Let's see here. Inside his body, he's got his top left and top left left arm, and so yeah, let's try to put the reeds in between these arms. It move them down there. Let's put them back up here. And we're gonna rotate them and they shrink. Oh, because we probably because of Hornatio is shrink for the scene. So let's uh, get them back to normal size by placing them near the originals. 
and they're all about the same thickness that's that's about right so there we go so here we've got Carnatio Bunny Slam alright so now let's and you can see I've got those two arms in front of the reeds. So it can look like he's reaching around them. Um, let's bring the whole group up. Oops. Pernatio, not, not the reeds. Bring the whole group upward. There we go. Oh, and the wagon is going to be over top of Zoe's, so we need to bring the wagon over top of her. So let's do that. Here's the wagon. So that should be here as Hornatio slams the uh, logs. So that means we've got to move that buckboard that's pretty simple I like that Just close to make sure we're not distorting things there we go so now here's Hornatio and he's got the the reeds so let's go back to and position his arms and fingers as there we go yeah like he's got a hold of wait a minute there we go so he would be holding them like this I'll, I'll move the reeds don't worry so then this arm would be coming around to support them like that so it doesn't really matter what his hand looks like at the moment this hand uh, would be grabbing the reeds then this arm would be supporting them from under here and this one grabbing from above and so we need to put the reeds all in this gap here so we go down into his body with the handled reeds so this first one's in good place, so we just pick this one up, hit T on our keyboard, hit the edge of the object we want to get a hold of. If it'll let us, it's not letting me. Oh, it is. I just didn't know. So we're going to bring this down. It's got to be under his armpit there. So just like that. And the other two are already in that position so bam now this one's going to hit the end of the uh, wagon so we'll bring it back a little bit like this now we can make him look like he's grabbing it so we go back to Hernatio now we can bring this arm oops need the bone controller so we're gonna bring this down like he's got a hold of it like this and then this hand, we're going to stretch these fingers and open them up like this. So it shows he's actually gripping. The reeds here. So yeah, there's bones getting in the way of what you can do. But if you use him for a little bit, it's easy to figure out. So there, he's slamming the sticks into the wagon. And we need to bring his uh, thought bubble. Does he have... Oh, he doesn't say anything. But we're going to use that same thought bubble. So we're going to go in and we're going to change it. And this is just going to go slam! Exclamation! Then this is going to be in surprise. Ta-da! And then we're going to make it huge. So we're just going to stretch the bubble over here. Uh, hey, I was able to move it without it. Oh, it did, it did change. See, if you touch the bubble before you hit apply, you lose what you did. So 
always remember before you go moving things hit apply so it's not the same as okay so now we want this to be slam but it's not going to be a thought bubble this is going to be a boom bubble boom and then we're going to make it huge and let's move this behind the wagon okay so where I usually put all the uh, dialogue in front I'm going to put this slam in the back and uh, remember I didn't hit apply so our color is wrong it's not surprise so we need to go back and change it to surprise and then hit apply so there's our slam now we can say okay oh it changed the bubble too <laughs> so we need to go back to a boom bubble and apply and now to put it behind the wagon we simply drag it down in the layers here until it's behind the wagon so there's her natio and there's the wagon and it's open so I need to go by it and there we go right there and it moved it so we need to find where it put it down here back and now it's as if it's in the wagon which is better so slam inside the wagon okay so now he's happy let's um let's make his eyes go up so let's see where'd he go here's the wagons close oh we can't close the wagon down because we need to uh, change the tongue to no hands so just the tongue there we go and then we're gonna put that back down where it belongs on the ground okay which would be about right there easy way to make sure is just bring your wheel to like that and now we know that the wheel and the handle are at the same level so now poor Zoe Zoe oh we're gonna do uh, Hornatio first so let's look at Hornatio and uh, we're going to uh, make his eyes like he is he is happy <laughs> and let's give him more of a smile <laughs> and uh, let's see can we Um, I'm trying to see more of his face instead of, uh, let's see, well that works, his, his hand's going in the wagon there, and let's bring, oops, we'll bring this arm back to here, there we go, now we've got his face, and we can turn his head towards what he's doing there and uh, his eyes a little bit more there and make his <laughs> pupils open because he's excited and of course his eyes should be all the way open because he's anticipating that slam and now we've got to make Zoi Zoi hop bang her head so she's going to go bam so behind the axle, but hit the uh, floorboard underneath. So let's uh, bring her head up like this. Boom. Her antennas would be coming up too, but they would hit the floorboard. So they couldn't go any further than uh, the bottom of the buckboard panel there. So bam, like that. And that one would be like that her eyes would be wide open because she's ex she's just been surprised and startled so let's see her eyes here wide open her pupils would be uh, tiny so we'll do that and they look straight out because she doesn't know what just happened 
and I don't see her mouth, but let's let's bring her over just a bit because she was snoring, and so she may have stretched over a little bit here. So now we can do her mouth, and we're gonna make her shouting. So let's first get it to normal. So this is the normal mouth, and let's find uh, the shouty. There we go. And then we'll open the mouth more. And open the jaw more. So we can see her tongue there. And let's bring the tongue up just to there. And her Z's, those are going to become, um, well wait, let's, she would have pushed off her arms too. So we'll uh, slam her arms down to the ground hard as she's coming up and turn the hand a bit there. That's pretty much all we can do at this point. Uh, she's under the wagon so she doesn't have a lot of room to maneuver. So ouch and we need to go to her uh, text. And it's no longer a thought bubble. It's going to be uh, a boom bubble as well. And uh, hit apply. And then what was her text? Just ow, ow, ow. That hurt. So there we go. We're going to copy that. So we paste that in the text box. And let's... Let's uh, separate it by hitting enter. Ow, 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 that hurt. All right, and we'll shrink the size of the box to match the text better. And she's surprised, so we need to change the text to surprise. And apply, and then move the box that holds her text to just like that. So first we're going to read slam and then we're going to read how that hurt. And of course now this panel we got is uh, too far close to the camera. So we're going to back the camera out to capture the whole scene. Then we're going to center the scene in the camera. And we want to get her natio and Always remember when you're doing these, you're trying to make a page that kids want to color. Every single panel should be made as if we're trying to make it for coloring. So here we go, we're going to render. And again, we're on third, now let's save it. Always save before any major step. And so we've saved our position 13. Now we're going to render that out. So again, if you'd like to help us write stories, email us. I will send you our uh, spreadsheet of our characters and their personalities. And you can read the Begillager's comics to this point. And, and well, we do have a couple of scripts already ready to go. So you would have to jump ahead of the story, but we would let you know where we're at and how you can continue on. And, uh, help us build uh, different personalities. If only one person does everything we do, it's all going to have the same feel every time. We don't want that. We want diversity. We want many different societies using Danger Aware because abuse is a worldwide issue. It's a human problem. It is not just in the churches just in the schools, just in the home. It is everywhere. And so if you want to help us, we need writers. We need people to write stories that are cute and funny and entertaining and will help kids learn about personal rights. So here our, our frame is finished. So we can go save it. And this is not going to be 13, it's going to, or 14. Of 13. It should be 13. Why am I on 14? 
let's see, frame one, two, this is gonna be three. Hmm. So I must have moved too far ahead when I moved ahead. So that's all right, we're still not, uh, yeah, there's 13 there. And yeah, I must have accidentally advanced, probably hit the uh, move button before I moved Zoi Zoi. So, oh well, we'll just continue on as if uh, we're one number off now. So um, after the slamming that happens right here, okay, so now we need to uh, look at the script. And Zoe's going to go, what's going on? Why am I under this wagon? And she rubs her head. So uh, we didn't put a question mark in the script, but we should. All right. So we're going to go to our script and go to her ow, ow, ow. And put in the new script. And now we need to make it fit. And we don't want it to be... Uh, a boom bubble anymore. Let's uh, let's make it a square bubble. Cause she's she's upset. This is surprise and everything. So let's put a gap between the text there and under this wagon. Three words at a time seems to be a good pattern. So and she's now no longer surprised but she's uh probably going to be in anger and pain so um since she's asking a question we'll say the anger is probably more prevalent than the pain at this point so here we go we're going to apply that and uh now these uh sticks that hernatio is holding those need to be in the wagon. So um, go down into Hornatio. And we're just going to go ahead and take the handled reeds out of Hornatio now. Because we don't need them in his hands anymore. And. Oh. There we go. Oh, it's still inside of you. There we go. All right, now they've grown, but we're just gonna grab the layer and shrink them down to size, which, um, yeah, they should just barely be in the wagon, basically. So we're now gonna straighten them out. They're gonna be laying flat on the bottom of the buckboard. And just put them right about there. Let's hide the text for the moment so I can see what I'm doing. Because we don't want it to extend past the stop boards in the front of the wagon. So we need to bring these inside the wagon about right there. And now I'm actually going to pick up each one of them individually and rotate it to lay it flat. Oops. There we go. They should be laying mostly flat in the bottom of the bed. And the same with this one because they're no longer being held. So they're going to just let gravity pull them down and put them in the wagon. So now Hornatio, we can move him and the, the, the uh, reeds won't move with him. So we can go to Hornatio. We're going to bring him on around to the back side of the wagon here. And since he's behind uh, Zoe's, let's move him below her. There we go. And he's going to be laughing, I think. Uh, let's look at the, uh, yeah, he's laughing. So he's going to have a text box. Go back over here and go to our texts. And where is our slam? Oh, I moved it. That's right. Um, I wanted it behind. Well, I don't know where I put it. 
So we just click on it with the uh, layer select tool and there it is and we're just going to turn it off. And then we're going to go to our text boxes because I've got a bunch of them at the top here. And uh, turn this one on. Now turn that one on. And we're going to go into taste very good. We're going to control V to paste the laughing. We're going to separate the laughing to three different lines. And it's going to be a regular clean bubble. And it's going to be slightly bigger than the text. Uh, but not too much. Right about there. And hit apply. And this is going to be not love, but just joy. So speech joy. He's going to be so happy about this. And there we go. Apply. And OK. And then we pick up his speech bubble and put it where it belongs. And get rid of that other bubble. Why is it showing up? Oh, because I had to draw that manually. That's right. So get rid of that now. So now Zoizoig is going, what's going on? And uh, why am I under this wagon? So she'd be bringing her head back down because she hit it. And her antenna should be in heavy question mark mode, which. Uh, I like to make them look like question marks going towards each other, which also kind of looks like a heart if you're not careful. So make sure that uh, you can keep them separate while they're being question marks like that. Um, now she's asking a question. Her eyes would narrow. So let's uh, close her up. Let's, oh wait, that's her head up and down. So yeah, she would be looking around. So yeah, we'll bring her head up like that and close her eyes like this. Why am I into this you now? And uh, change your mouth just a little bit. Move her pupils there. She's looking around. What happened? Because we can't just keep characters static from frame to frame. It doesn't look right. It looks it's it looks lazy. That's really all it does. It looks lazy. So Harnatio, he's just laughing up a storm. Let's open his uh, mouth up a little more. Let's see, like that. Bring his jaw down because he's laughing so hard. Um, like right there. And bring his tongue down because he's getting it out. And uh, we'll turn his head back to straight and tilt it back. Ah! <laughs> so there we go. There's our next frame. So now we adjust our camera view because you can see our uh, window is quite small at the moment. So let's zoom until we can get everything we need from the frame. And then we position it. And I like to try to make sure that if I need to cut an image, I can cut it from the right hand side because that's the easiest way to do it in the uh, paint program. So we're gonna put the wagon just like that. So we got sticks in the wagon. Hernatio's walked on around, he's laughing. Zoe's going, what's going on? And let's zoom in a little closer. I like to show off their features when we can. So let's bring it to right like that. So now this is frame four. Control R to render. A 
again, we need writers if you're interested in helping. If you would like to do our comic pages for us, uh, we could use somebody that would volunteer to do this. Uh, if you'd like to do animations for us, uh, we can certainly use people to work on our animations. We don't have a lot of money, so we can't pay anybody. But uh, we could definitely use some help. So I didn't bother to pose his body because it's all behind the wagon. And there we go. What's going on? Why am I under this wagon? And Arnacio is laughing. So I'm going to save as PNG. And this is our fourth frame. So I, the easiest way is just to... Uh, why is three in front of the others? Because the little dash is wrong. Look at that. Let me fix that. So on these, I'm going to put this dash right there. Now they should be in order. There we go. So I just grabbed number three. That changes the name down here. Uh, make sure you don't hit save yet because then you're overwriting number three. But there we go. So now we can save that as number four. And give it a moment, then close it. And now let's look at the script. So panel five, Hornatio helps Zoys out from under the wagon. I know how much you love jokes, so I played one on you. <laughs> Remember, Zoi Zoi Hop, she likes to play uh, practical jokes that are very rarely practical. So uh, <laughs> Hornatio played one on her. So let's change his text here. And he's still happy, so we really don't need to change from joy, but we do need to separate the text. So there's only four to three or four words per line. And that works. That works just like that. So we're going to hit apply. And OK. So now let's imagine he's helping her up out of the up from under the wagon we could actually just get rid of the wagon for this scene and imagine that we're filming it from the other side of the wagon so let's do that let's we got to get rid of the uh, the uh, buckboard cover the uh, near side buckboard so right there and then we want to get rid of the reeds uh, well, those reeds too, but we want to get rid of the handled reeds. And where did I put those? Oh, there they are. So we get rid of the handled reeds. And so now we just make Hornatio helping her get up. So let's go to Hornatio. And he will bend over and help her get up. So he's gonna reach down. Cause it is all in good fun. It wasn't meant to hurt her. It was just a joke. He had the opportunity to play and so he did. So open up his hands to be reaching down to get her. There, he's already behind her, so that works. And like this, like that. And of course, he's going to be bending over. So his arms are going to move when I bend him. So this is just not too much. There we go. That's better. So now he's reaching to help grab the wrong bone. He's reaching to help her. Let's go ahead and open the fingers a bit. And, well, let's tilt his head down because he's going to be helping her. And tilt it, turn. We can turn and tilt slightly 
but if you do too much turning and tilting together the distortions get to be too much so if you're going to use both turning head and tilting head in a 2d animation like this just be aware of how much you can get away with so we're going to close up his mouth a bit because he's still happy and uh we'll just go to there bring his uh eyebrows to just like that and he bring his eyes down he's he's laughing so shrink the pupils to normal and bring his eyes down like he's looking at her to help her and so now she should be standing up so we'll bring her into position um, let's rotate her like this first so she's in the right orientation all right yeah so now she's she's straight up and down for her puppet but her character needs to be posed so we're going to do that so she's first of all she's getting up and uh, her arms will be coming around to the front there like that her legs mm, let's do that with them she would be standing up and probably brushing herself off you know I'll get in the dust off of herself so let's bring her hand around like this and turn it that way so we can see the back of her hand this one oh bring her wings up yeah her wings should come up because she's gonna be flapping them to get the dust off of her change her mouth it's not going to be smiling but it, it shouldn't be that wide open chin up she's going to be turned this way her head will be normal or down her eyes this way her eyes will still be open because she's still figuring out what's going on arm out here this arm over here like that Let's turn it so we can see the hand She's rubbing her head so then turn it back to right there rubbing her head and this arm will be brushing her off so again we want to rotate it so we're seeing the back of the hand like that and then uh, bring it up like this bring her fingers out like she's dusting herself off and where is that thumb there we go so there she's dusting herself off I think that That looks more like she's brushing it off. So, this hand. Uh, that's the thumb. That's the stretch of the finger. This is. There we go. And this hand would also be reaching over to clean her off. So, let's bend these fingers just a bit. Oop, wrong finger. And. We want to rotate the wrist so we're seeing the back. So there's Zoe's. Let's uh, do her legs a little bit here. She's not happy though. Let's give her more of a frown. And she 
should have been uh, stooped over a bit because she's standing up. So, kind of like that. And let's move our antennas so they're not just the same as they were in the question mark mode. But this, she's still questioning, but it's it's not as uh, serious. So we'll we'll do it kind of like that. All right. So now she's not in the wagon anymore. What's the script say? Um, she looks discouraged and admonished. That, that she does. But um, maybe this should be another panel. Sometimes I do that while I'm working. Because actually when she starts laughing, she should be, uh, well, no, she's still not happy. She's only laughing because she knows that's a joke that she would have played if she had thought of it. So let's go ahead and change her text. And haha, that was funny. You know, admitting that it was. And we separate behind the comma, of course. I wish I had thought of that. And then we're going to make it a normal balloon. So, clean balloon. And uh, the tail is a little long. Let's go with short tail. And then we're going to shrink that bubble. So, see, I love that Moho included these dot dot text bubbles I mean easily we could have easily created the bubbles and moved them around and, and done all that with just regular vectors but this does make it so much easier oh and her speech is no longer angry so uh, I think we would be recriminant at this point because she knows she would have done this too and that's why she's saying haha that's fun Okay, so there we go, like that. And because this is on the other side of the wagon, we're gonna just zoom in really close. So we're gonna put this as far over here as possible. Well, let's see, we need that text above our natio. Um, yeah, let's move his text to the left-hand side of the page. And then we'll move hers to the right. So let's flip the horizontal, apply, and then OK, and then move it to this side. So it's obvious that her text comes after his text. Now we adjust the camera, or adjust the scene in the camera. We're going to do just like that. And these reeds wouldn't show either, would they? Those are all way out in front of them. So let's get rid of these reeds. And there's our image. So we control R, or we save. <laughs> let's make sure we save. And I didn't move ahead. Shoot. So I didn't move forward before changing all those scene parts oh well so save as or save and then render and I guess since I didn't change I may as well keep it there and use 5 instead of 15 so if we had to come back into this document to recreate the cell we would need to recreate the complete cell if it happened to be the cell we just came off of so so by doing each cell in a different frame we can come back to those frames and how we had the characters posed the text box won't be the same and will be you know have different text in it but other than that 
you can uh, you can just keep moving things and changing them and go back to see what you had before. So if you're not a writer, if you're an animator, please get a hold of us. We could use any animation you want to put together that would teach children how to call out abuse, how to inform others that they're being hurt or that somebody's not being good with them. And there we go. So we've got our little frame and he's helping her up. So now we save it as a PNG. And this is gonna be frame five. So we just click on four and change this to five. And actually, if I had started with a new document, this wouldn't even need to be changed. It would just be saving. So now we've got five frames. So the next one, so they work together to fill the wagon with many long sticks and then head back to the rocket site. So there's no dialogue here. Um, so basically we just need to bring the wagon back in and the reeds and everything. So we're gonna show the whole scene again. And then we're just gonna fill the wagon up with reeds and show them working on it. So let's uh, get rid of the text boxes. I'm just going to turn them off. And we want the handled um, sticks, the handled reeds. Handled reeds, there we go. And the wagon. And so the handled reeds, we're just going to duplicate and fill the wagon with them. Uh, I've got to go to the frame zero. So what we're going to do, I'm just going to duplicate handled reeds a couple of times. So when we get to frame 15, they're all just overlapping each other. They're all there. You just can't see them. Then at frame 16, we're going to separate them so that they fill the wagon. And we may as well distort them a little bit. So shrink this up, move them over. Uh, we can grab the magnet tool and you know just change them slightly. The magnet tool is quite large here. Let me shrink it down using Alt and dragging left with the click, we can shrink that down. So now we can come in and just change the tips of some of them. So handle groups five, we're gonna move them up into the wagon. Let's tilt them a little because they don't all go in the exact same way. We'll move it like that, change their length, grab the magnet, change the tips positions just so they're not exact same set of reads over and over and then four again making comics is so much easier than animations and let's go ahead and flip this one and rotate it a bit like that and shrink it in and then Two more. Bring them like this, and like this, and bring these like this, and like this. Yes. All right. So what we just need to do now is take the. Uh, take one pack of handled reeds and show Hornatio uh, putting them in the wagon basically. So, and Zoizoiz as well, you know. Let's uh, close the wagon up. Mm, 
we'll just bring Hernatio here, like he's handling these reeds. And I don't think we really need to change his uh, position much or his look because I'm sure he's still enjoying the fact that he got one up over on uh, Zoi Zoi when she's the one that's generally causing problems. So we'll just uh, give him the general look of handling the uh, reeds here. To not have his hand laying on the ground. So we'll do that. And he's rotated. Yeah, turn his head a little more. That looks better. And then with Zoi Zoi, we'll bring her on this side of the wagon. So she goes above the wagon so we see her. And actually she needs to be above the reeds and buckboard as well. So your side buckboard is there. And now we've got her on this side. I'm thinking let's put her up there in the wagon or on the on the wheel and that's one thing I didn't pay attention to when I did the buckboard is actually it's overriding the wheels here a bit but hopefully nobody else notices like I didn't until just this moment so let's put her up here like she's standing on the center uh, portion of the flower because this is this is a uh, carnation. So let's move the legs. And the way I've done her feet, uh, I did an action on her foot here. And you can see the spines on the back of her leg. As I rotate her foot, the spines rotate behind her leg so that I can easily rotate her foot the other direction and the spines are in the right place. So we'll put her here standing uh, on this flower like that with that foot and like that. We'll rotate her hips. Yeah, she should be standing there like that. So now we can put that foot there and that foot there. Let's bend this knee oh, the right way is like that. So yeah, this knee needs to be bent the other way. There we go. And then she'll be, whoops, there and there. Now we'll turn her head and she'll be looking towards the work. She's no longer frowning. She's gotten over bumping her head. So we won't have her smiling per se, but we won't have her frowning. So now she'll be looking over at Hornatio and helping. And so bringing her hands up. Bring her wings down out of the way. We'll rotate her uh, shoulders around. Now, why weren't her arms going behind her body there? They should have been. And so now her hands um, should be the other direction. As she's reaching up to help. So she's helping to guide the uh, sticks into the wagon. Um, she needs to be higher up. Let's make her standing on the buckboard. put her foot braced against the board there. And 
and then standing on the the tire there. Um, since we don't want the wheel beam in front, we can get rid of this. Let's do that. Let's can't do that. We can do we can move the points, but we can't delete them. So let's let's move these points and see what happens. We want to see That lets us see more of the wagon wheels. But that should be all the way to there. This one be like that. There we go. There we go. Now it looks like the wagon wheel is there, kind of. There we go. Now it looks like he's standing on the wheel. And on the back wheel. See if I move that line. I wonder. Just move this up like this. Because the original one's still there hide these lines if we can. Let's try width. Can we change the width? Yeah. There we go. We'll just change the width to get rid of those black lines. Which now lets it look like the wagon wheel is there. And these buckboards should be also up. Good enough, I guess. So, there, we've got Zoys working on the wagon. Let's, uh... There we go. Fingers a little bit stubby. Actually, what we can do here is just B for bone and grab all these bones and just reset them. So they don't, they won't reset the character, but they'll reset the hand to normal. And then we can start from normal and go, okay, now we want to do this. And then we want to do this. Not that far. There we go. So there's that hand and this hand. We will have it reaching as well. But the fingers won't be near as uh, curved. And the thumb will be out. Like Alright, and we save. This is control 
already rendered. So I I don't know if you've been watching the comics of the Pagillages so far, but Hornatio is a bully. He will always be a bully. He likes to boss people around. And not in every scene, of course, but he never learns his lesson. He always goes back to bullying, and even after he's been explained in detail, hey, quit being a bully. Well, he still be a bully. And we need to use that. We need to call it out. We need to call bullying out. We need to teach children that they can call it out. So there we got all our logs and our sticks stacked in the wagon. Then we get the buckboard. There we go. So we save as PNG. We simply grab the last cell and add a number. So we now have our six frames. And then we need to make the final frame for this comic uh, page. And that's going to be where they're headed out with the wagon full of supplies. So, this is going to be a little bit more difficult. We're going to move them up and over here to this area. And let's start with Zoid. We'll grab her layer and bring her over here. And you can see she's getting distorted. Nothing to worry about. Um, the near buckboard is going to have to come as well. So we're going to bring that on over here. Those reeds are going to stay where they're at. Those reeds are going to stay where they're at. Alright, so we got these handled reeds. They're all going to move with the wagon. So we're going to grab all these. Well, that last one needs to be laid down in the group. And we're going to grab all of those and move them over here. And we're going to flip them because the wagon is now going the other direction. And we're going to put these up in behind the buckboard. Now we need to go get the wagon. We're going to bring it on over. We're going to flip it. And put it in place. So we need to find the Oh, I didn't turn the buckboard around, did I? Okay, so your side buckboards need to be flipped as well. There we go. Now we'll just move them into place. Right. There. And then we're going to bring Hornatio on over. And again, he's going to distort because that's the way the program works. Look how distorted he is. Alright, so we're going to stick him here. We're going to put him in front of the wagon. We're going to bring the wagon's tongue up and... Oops. Put the uh, Hernatio's hands on it. So both hands because it's now heavy so he would definitely have to work the wagon hard and so we'll just bring this up and 
key needs to come down. He's, well, maybe not. He's about right. So he's about in the center. So, to make things easy, let's move the camera on over so that we can uh, manipulate the character properly. So I'm right clicking and dragging to uh, bring the uh, scene where I want it. So now you can see the distortion's done. And Hornatio will be looking the other direction. What will Zoizoi be doing? Let's put her behind the wagon pushing. So we'll bring her on over here. Put her feet on the ground. Yeah, she fits underneath. She can just be uh, about right there would be middle. And then more to this side right there. So she could barely catch and push it. So but we will do that. So the near buckboard looks like it's a little bit off. Let's go ahead and rotate it a little bit more. There we go. And then we'll put, um, let's put the buckboard on top of Zoe's and then her arms can go behind it as if she was pushing on the floorboards. And bring her thumb in. And pushing. So, let's see. I guess we need to move her a little bit in more. And she'd be she'd be tilted into her work. Let's bring her, in, her uh, wings up out of the way, and she'll be pushing. So now we can bring her over like this, up like that. And bring this hand on over. There we go, and let's So we can also stretch her arms if we wanted to do that, but I'm not going to mess with doing that her hands out there. It looks like she's working at what she did. And it should actually be the back of it. Yeah. So there we go. Zoe Zoe's is pushing. Let's kick her leg up to show that she is behind The reeds there. All right. So now we got to go over here to Hornatio. Um, well, before we do, let's make Zoe's look like she's working by closing her mouth and just a slight frown. And her eyes, she'd be concentrating, and her antennae would be just like that, around your eyes. So now we go to Hernatio. In the wagon. And we're gonna put him in the right place. And there's the wagon. And he should actually be on the other side of the wagon. Let's bring the wagon over him. So now that gives
gives us him behind the, the wagon. Whoops. Should be on her knee. She left the wagon. So that puts him behind the wagon. So we can put him up right about here. Again, we're going to use his uh, lower arms to show that he's got a hold of the wagon. All right, so he's pulling the wagon. Let's uh, put some pressure on his feet. And reaching out with the next foot. Turn his head towards his direction of travel. Turn his body, uh, whoops, body, towards the direction away from travel. Let's bring his uh, arms around, I think. Yeah. But we can't do that because he's pulling. So. Well. Maybe we'll make the other two arms work again. So. There we go. And let's tilt his head up this way. Because he's traveling this direction. That, that looks more like he's pulling something. And we'll put a little effort in his eyebrows. And I think we've got our scene. So we render it. And I think I forgot to move forward. Maybe, maybe not. Remember to always prepare your background as a separate document, then save that background as a PNG, and then import that PNG into your next needed document. And I've done that with uh, our bug illagers. I've created a bunch of black and white and color scenes that can be grabbed and thrown together to create a new unique scene on the fly real easy. So we should be starting to produce more and more cartoons uh, as things go and certainly more comic strips. to the rocket build site. So I'm going to save this and it's frame number six, seven. This is going to be number seven. And so now we have our seven panels for this comic strip script. Let's double check the script. Yeah, the last two, they're just filling the wagon and then pulling it towards the rocket. So, we have our comic strip images ready to go. So, let's save our work on our bug illagers. And thank you, Moho. And we're going to close Moho now that we're done with it. And we're going to open Publisher. 
Microsoft Publisher. But if you see here, I've got the Begillagers 21 Publisher. So we're going to open that up. And this is just a basic page that I've created and copied into every folder and renamed it. But now we can go in and do the details. So let me zoom in here. This is going to be issue number 21. So we do that. And this is January of uh, 2024. So we come over here to this and we go 01 2020. Zero. 0 slash 24 and now the name of this particular episode is uh, Hernatio pulls a joke or something like that let's look at our script again and Hornatio pulls his own joke so we copy that and we paste here so we edit the text and always remember to leave a space on both ends of whatever you put in uh, this particular tool because otherwise it cuts it off for some reason if you use any of the uh, shape things. So let's change the shape a bit. Um, let's go with this. You really can't tell it did much, but we'll use it. Now we're going to tilt it a little. Um, we want to know what the last one was. So we're going to go in here to the Begillager's comic. And we're going to look. So the last one we had it tilting from the left going down to the right. So this one we're going to tilt it the other direction. So we're going to grab this and we're going to tilt it from the left going up to the right. So Hernatio pulls his own joke. So there we've got the very top of our comic page ready to go inside of Publisher. Now we need to bring in our panels and put them in here. Thing is, they're all exactly the same size right now. So if we go in and look at these as, uh, you know, as uh, objects, you know, the icon, you can see they're all exactly the same size. So what I do now is I open each one of these in Microsoft Paint. So we go open with Paint. You can use Paint 3D or whatever you like. It's, it's just personal preference. So now I need to make a small box in case we couldn't use the whole one. We need some small shorter boxes. So let's bring this down to 2500 right there. And then save as and then I add an A behind it for altered so it's frame 1 A alright and it warns me about transparency loss which is fine then we're going to open the next one character development and then the comic so now we need to go into 21 and we're going to open up number two. And we look at it. And like I said, I always make it where we can cut it from the right if possible, because then all we got to do is pick this up and move this over. So we can cut that down to there. But as you can see, I left some room behind him. Um, but we still need to see Zoys. I'm going to go ahead and do what I normally don't and select all. And then drag this to the left till Hornatio is just barely in the scene. Make sure I don't cut anything off important. And then drag this on over to right. There. So there's our short, short panel. For number two so we save as and we add an A behind the two it warns us about transparency we open up the third one determine 
where can we shrink this one? And well, I think again we just need to move it all to the left. I should have done that in the construction of the scene. And there we go. And then we can bring this just about to there. So there's another uh, not quite square, but it's shorter than the original. So we'll go in and A, add A for the altered version. Warns about transparency here every time. Then we're going to open up number four. Again, determine where can we shrink this image. And uh, I think we're going to go ahead and bring it on over left. I'm just going to keep just the text. Whoops. Select all. And then move it left. Then bring the left over. And we'll put it right there. So now we save that as the altered version of 4. And then warning about transparency, and we open up 5. So this one we can easily just bring this on over right there and save as and 5A Get the warning and we open up number this one, yeah, we can shrink it down a little bit, so let's drag this on over, and then we only need to show that they're both working together. So save as, add the A for altered. file open and we open up number seven shrink it down to see where we can cut it if we can and yeah, we can slide it to the left I guess so like that down just to where Hornatio is still fully in the scene. We save as 7A. So now we've produced each of our frames, our panels, and we've got each one of them in two different sizes. So now we go into Publisher, and we're going to bring in those images. So we insert pictures. And we need to go to the Animation Department, Character Development, the Begillager, or the Comics, the Begillagers, and then to number 21. And now we bring in all of these images. There's 14 of them. There we go. So we need to find our first panel that we're going to use. And let's see here. Let's put them all side by side instead of the way it put them in for us here. Let's put slam next to slam. That one 
there's that one. This is this one. This is the one where they're getting up. No? Hmm. What do we got here? All right. This is the, this is where he's saying, I know how you meant you like jokes. Pulling the wagon, that's the slam, that's the putting in tool or the, the lumber. And this is the she fell asleep. So that one's there, that one's there. Okay, where's the other? She fell asleep. I'm missing one.
should now be basically the same height. And we can now, actually when you distribute, it takes everything from the left and the right and then figures out in the between. And you know what, I think we can actually go to about there. Let's just go a little bit over the edge there. And same here, we'll just go slightly over the edge. Now we grab all of them. And align them and distribute horizontally. And then we make sure that their centers are aligned. Oh, wrong way. Middles. Not centers, but middles. We align their middles. There we go. So the next part is this scene. Let's see, can we make it? Completely fill that center. And that, that might work. So these are going to all be very small. Hmm. Let's try. Doing this instead. We'll put this one here. This one here. This one here. This one needs to be bigger. Now we grab all of them and we align and distribute horizontally. And so that shows us that we can actually go taller. So we're going to go a little taller with all of these. a little too much. Then we'll center them in the page. And we don't want a whole lot of gap between the bottom and the throat. So there we go like that. And now we take these two and we expand them. So this one can be expanded more. and down there. So, we start off, Hernatio finds Zoe, and he's not happy. So let's, yeah, so this panel is behind panel one, so I can move it over. Here he slams. the bum boards in and she go she goes ow and then she says what's going on all right and then I know how much you like a joke so that one should be there and oh that's what happened I got that one twice so I shouldn't have that <laughs> So let's bring that over there. I know how much you like a joke. That should be here. Then they work together. All right. Now I've got it better. So let's rearrange. Now we got to resize. So these should probably be a little smaller. Now this one goes 
larger. And this one gets larger. So there, now, let's distribute them properly. So these align, distribute horizontally, and they can all get bigger. Let's just do that. Let's make them bigger. And now bring this one over. Now distribute them. These two are ready, and these two are ready. And let's see. That one's kind of narrow. Where's the other? She fell asleep. And it's this one here. Let's bring this one, uh, bring forward, there we go, and we can move this one, so we get a little bit more of a scene happening, but it's similar. So we're going to export PDF. Again, we're just going to grab the same name that's already there and rewrite it. And let's open it up and double check it again. <laughs> it's a good thing I always read through. So she fell asleep. I should yell and wake her. <laughs> and yeah, you can still see her sleeping there. So then slam. Ow, 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 that hurt. <laughs> What's going on? Why am I under this wagon? I know how much you love jokes, so I played one on you. <laughs> that was funny. I wish I had thought of it. Of course, she's frowning, so she's not really laughing. So then we show them working on filling the wagon, and then taking the wagon to the rocket site. So there we go. There is how we produce a comic for Danger Aware. And look here, I've got this white border that's missing, so I need to fix that. So what I do is I'm going to open up this document and paint again. So that's number one. So we're going to go back and open one. And then we'll retrim it. So we're going to select all. We're going to drag it to the left. Just the text showing back to the right position down and then we're gonna drag this over and right there I think so now we'll save that as a so one a and save over top of that and we lose transparency now we're gonna go back to here and we're going to delete the original 1A. We're going to move this one over and we're going to import the picture 1A. So now we've got a better picture for our purpose here. So now we just bring it down bring it to the right size. And now we've got our white 
border where it needs to be. And I think that will also let's see. Let's maybe bring in the bigger picture. So we get So he's completely in the scene. Yeah, we can do that. Let's go a little bigger. Move it to the edge. And this one can go a little bigger. Now they're touching, so I'm just going to... Uh, let's see. What's the gap? The gap there looks right. No, I'm going to leave it just like that. There, it doesn't have to have a gap between. Well, let's bring this just slightly smaller. There. Now we've got it. So now we can save. And then produce. Or export. And here we go. So Hornatio pulls his own joke. Issue number 21, A Danger Wear Production, January of 24. She fell asleep. I should yell and wake her up. <laughs> oh, that is much better. It does show he's backing that wagon over her. Then he slams down the sticks inside. Ow, 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 that hurt. What's going on? Why am I under this wagon? <laughs> I know how much you love jokes, so I played one on you. Ha, 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 that was funny. I wish I had thought of it. And then they get back to work. And then they're off. I think that works. So we, well, now I need to save this. Because I don't just save it here, I have to put it online. So I need to go to our uh, graphics, our um, website backup, and our latest backup is here. And we go to images, and to comics, and we save the Bug Elders 21. And then I zoom in to right about there. And I control or alt print screen that lets me capture this top screen and I go into paint and I open from number one from the Gillager's number one I want to open the comics frame here so now I'm going to paste the new one and it's about the same size, not exact. And if we use transparency, it doesn't work. Um, let's try this. And then control Z and then paste it again. Nope, still don't have the uh, transparency so you can see that it's a little bit smaller than the original one um, the way I captured it but if I bring that to there right there's about the center and this is way too large so we're gonna bring its size to 1200 by 800 And we can double check that here. So it's 794. I'm not quite at 800. Um, and we don't want any of this panel part. So we're going to do that. And that's not, that's kind of too high. So we're going to select all and bring it down a bit. And just like that. And now we can save this as the comic frame for 21. So we go into 21. 
21 and comic 21 frame 0. There we go. Now I have my title page for the website. So when I build the um, the Gillagers web page and go to the comics, I have this for here. So what's going to happen is I'm going to push the first ones off of the page and bring these down. So we will never have more than just 20 images on this page because it's already starting to take a bit of time to load and so I will put another page up where these can be accessed uh, if you want to you know you'll be able to go back to older ones because eventually there's going to be a ton of these comics and you can't put them all on the one page so that's it that is how we make a comic for the bug illagers for danger aware I will now go and upload that to our website so that people can download it. I will save this file here. And we're now ready to start the next one, which has its own script. So we would go to 22. And you can see here, we've just got the basics just to get started. So there's the basic Bug Illager's publish file to start from scratch, no numbers or anything, and just the title in the right place. And then we've got the script. So as you can see, the script's been written, and I'm ready to start working on the next document. So that's how we do it. If you, again, would love to help us and write some scripts for the Bug Illagers, uh, we have some basic script outlines. So we have, like, we want a story about this and we need somebody to come in and make it into a script for us that we can then create the comics and continue on. So if you'd like to help, please come help info at dangeraware.org. You can also go to Danger Aware directly and uh, see everything that we've been doing there, which is, uh, you know, not just the Big Illagers. We also have all of our games. We've got our ebook, Stranger in the House which is what started all of this. Then we got Pollen Picker, our latest game, then Rocket to the Moon, Fading Features, Spelling Game, Crossword Game, and Free Contests, as well as the comics. And then of course we've got our videos and our merchandise. So if you wanna help us out and you'd like to help but get something in return as well, you, you don't want to just donate, but you'd like to help. You can buy one of our Respect notebooks. So it says Respect My Personal Space. And the back side looks like that. And you can get it in multiple colors here. And so anything you like, just come onto our page here and you can purchase one of our merchandise. So we also have some apparel. So we've got some t-shirts and sweatshirts with Solari and Talar. There are twins that go to, uh, they, they love the Bagillagers. The Bagillagers are their favorite. So you can see we've got shirts, t-shirts, uh, tank tops, uh, hoodies, and they say respect my personal space. And the backs on the shirts, uh, there's uh, different configurations of the uh, astronauts than it was on the book so um, we've also got pillows face masks uh, thermoses uh, handkerchiefs so check out our store purchase something help us change the paradigm of abuse awareness thank you for watching come again you have a wonderful day and i'm going to close you out with watching our Danger Aware songs. Thank you for coming and watching Danger Aware. Danger, danger, could be a stranger, could be the one that lives next door. Danger, danger, could be a stranger, could be the one that you are. Watch for the things that cause a lot.
stranger could be the one that lives next door. Danger, danger, could be a stranger, could be the one that you adore. Stand your ground and speak out loud. Let the world know harm's all around. Danger, danger, could be a stranger, could be the one that lives next door. Danger, danger, could be a stranger, could be the one that you adore. Danger, danger. Danger, danger. Danger, danger, could be a stranger. Could be the